Australian made and owned, High Tech Oils is one of the largest oil blenders in Australia with a truly national profile, supplying an extensive range of oils, coolant, grease, batteries and much more for all businesses and consumer needs. Choose High Tech Oils for peace of mind. Welcome to round three of the Andros Trophy. We're in Isola 2000. We're high in the Alp Maritime of France, about 90 minutes north of Nice. Icy and cold conditions make it perfect for racing. On the menu today, we'll start with the action from the elite final. These are the amateur drivers who share the cars with professionals, so they need to keep them all in one piece. Then the electric race final with special guests Karine Galli and Stefan Plaza, French TV host, and the Elite Pro class with electric versus petrol engine cars. We'll see Super Pole and the Super Final. Before we get into action though, let's take a look at the track with Dorian Boccalacci. It starts from the start finish line with an almost never ending long right hander. Now this tightens up right towards the end and then turns back in on itself. So inside the snail shell, therefore, of course, we're going now long left-handed, tighter though than the first corner. Well, then there's a sharp left-hander onto the back straight. You can see the map in front of you. We've gone through the top left part and then essentially back straight, long right-hand corner, and then a straight on the return. So we're top right on the map now, coming back down towards bottom left of that map. And then the long two apex right-hander that ends the lap and across the start finish line here. And that's a lap of Isla 2000. Cars on the grid ready for the elite super final. Dorian Boccalacci on pole in his BMW, head of Margot Lafitte's Mazda. On row two is Lionel Daziano, the Audi A1 Quattro driver, won the opening race weekend. Manuel Moinel alongside him in the Renault Capture. And on row three, it's another Audi. Louis Gerbesson lines up in fifth position with Sylvain Poussier's Peugeot beside him. Number two car is in sixth spot. And then Stefan Bontaille in his Peugeot 3008 and Jerome Lopez with the BMW on row four of the grid. Nice still conditions, cold, icy and Nice and clear as we get ready to go. Pole position on the right-hand side as we look at it, left-hand side as they face us. Dorian Boccalacci with the BMW. Clearly the BMW are relishing the tight, twisty track here. Good start to get away ahead of Margot Lafitte. She cuts off the nose of Lionel Daziano. He's in third. Daziano, the grey and red Audi. Then up to fourth place is Emmanuel Moinel from fourth on the grid. Little change behind. Louis Gerveson, Super Poussier, Stefan Van Tyre battling away, but out front, Dorian Boccalacci. BMW M2. And there in third place is Lionel Daziano, the first of the Audis. Margot Lafitte in the showers of ice crystals. It's going to make visibility a little tricky. Cars really digging in deep with all the tiny inch long studs on the tyres and throwing up massive clouds of ice crystals and snow and that means for Dorian Boccalacci life is very straightforward he can see where he's going everybody else might be a little touch and go and in fact there is a bit coming off Daziano's Audi he's made contact Lugervis on up to fourth head of Stefan Van Tyre Lopez up to sixth position from eighth on the grid in his BMW there's that battle the grey Audi with the green highlights in fifth position and there's our race leader, Dorian Boccalacci. Margot Lafitte lost in the middle, and the cars are spreading out now. Third place, Lionel Daziano, flapping bits of the right-hand front wing. He's already lost some of it. You can see the headlight is damaged as well. These cars 
a real tube frame special, so they've got a space frame and body panels hung on them to make them look like the cars that they are representing. See bits of Taziano's car there. Now that might lead to a little bit of an overheating problem as well. Manuel Moanel in fourth place there. Louis Gerberson in fifth with the green highlights, lime green on his Audi. And he's trying to close down the car in front. And in the tight corners, that's more possible. Not just because the speed's allowed, but also because the cars are throwing the ice crystals out more behind them. On the straights where you really need the visibility to see the upcoming corners, it's making life very tricky indeed for everybody except Dorian Boccalacci. You see all these cars have got wipers on the side windows and for very good reason. Spend a lot of time looking out through the side window as they're drifting their way round. It's Boccalacci's BMW who leads. Lafitte still second, two and a half seconds back. Another 2.4 seconds back to Daziano. Manuel Gerberson, Ventaya and Lopez. Leader Dorian Boccalacci in only his second season on ice. He's normally a single-seater race. Oh, in trouble there. That's the second match to three, car number five. That's Philippe Bonsard. Looks like he might have tagged a bank there and slowed right down. And he was under pressure from behind. The number two machine, Sylvain Poussier. Poussier's also tagged a snowbank. Look at the left front damage. Looks like he's got through, though, past Bonsard. Dorian Boccalacci leading. Is the gap to Margot Lafitte growing? Yes, another second on the last lap. And Daziano dropping back further from the race leader. Here's the battle between 10 and 6. Number 10 machine, that is Stefan Von Tyre with Gilles Lopez and the BMW behind him. So that's the squabble for six, Paul Marshalls. Hoopio Motor Racing Marshall, you do get close to the action. You get very close to the action sometimes when you're needed. But freezing, showered with ice crystals, rather than boiled or fried or drowned as a Marshall trackside. Well, here's Pocalacci heading towards the final lap with a very comfortable advantage. Here we go, on to the last lap then, making this look very straightforward. Margot Lafitte, strong race from her in second place. In fact, Boccalacci is catching the tail enders at the moment. Tatiano in third place, then the Moanel Gerberson battle, that is for fourth. Oh, and Gerberson goes through. I think Moanel's just pulled off. Looked like he was heading into the pits there at the end of the front straight. No such dramas though for Dorian Boccalacci. Margot Lafitte going to be on the podium here in second place in the Mazda 3. Confusingly, car number four. Number seven machine, Dorian Boccalacci, first of the BMW M2s. And across the line, the checker flag is there. He may well not see it, but I'm sure the team have alerted him on the radio. Debris everywhere, very damaging race for a lot of the cars. Margot Lafitte in second position and rounding out the podium. It'll be the first of the two Audis. So an Audi 3-4. Tatiano inches ahead of Gerberson. Look at all the damage on the cars, Ventaya's Peugeot and everybody else as well. And Dorian Boccalacci, predominantly because he could see where he was going, car still looks much as it did when it started. Well, it's been a good day for Dorian Boccalacci. Perfect, in fact. He won in the qualifying heats the final and claimed the fastest lap as well. And that means he gets the biggest points haul. Margot Lafitte and the two Audis making up the rest of the top four. Boccalaccio then outscoring everybody else and winning the final plus the extra point for fastest lap. It's a 62 point day for him. And that brings him right into contention in the championship. In fact, that puts him dead level now with Louis Gerberson. So Louis Gerberson, Dorian Boccalacci tied at the top, 12 points ahead of Lionel Daziano, who is one ahead of Margot Lafitte, good and tight, right at the top of the elite class. So the first day's action is done, and they'll go again for day two. This is the first of five straight race weekends that lead us up to the grand final in Stade de France. Here is the podium then, Dorian Boccalacci, Margot Lafitte, who gets an extra trophy for being the top female racer, and Lionel Daziano. Pole man in the electric race is Christophe Ferrier, the multiple champion, taking the lead despite a good, strong challenge from Vincent Beltoise, the number two machine. Third place, Louis Gervasson. 
And as we saw with the elite class, these cars throwing up lots of snow and ice behind them, and that means the leader has a real advantage. This is perhaps the equivalent of racing single-seaters in heavy rain. Christophe Ferrier leading from Vincent Beltoise, and behind him, Louis Gerveson, number five machine. And behind the leader, everybody struggling to see where they're going. And particularly our guest drivers, TV host Stefan Plaza, half spins his machine. And behind him, Karine Galli, the journalist, gets caught up and then drags herself off into the wall. Number five, Louis Gervasson now on the charge, works his way up to second place ahead of Beltoise. And challenging leader, Christophe Ferrier, the number six machine. These three pulling away now from Louis Rosset in the number 10 car. Nice, close racing. TV host Stefan Plaza with another problem. The leaders go by, though, without too much drama. Ferrier, number six machine, negotiating the stranded car and heading towards victory. Not everybody else got through so successfully, though. There's been a big sort out behind him, but heading to his fourth win from four starts, Christophe Ferrier takes the chequered flag, and behind him, out fumbling the others, it is Louis Rousset who crosses the line in second place. Vincent Beltoise completing the podium in third. Confirmation then, Christophe Ferrier, Louis Rousset and Vincent Beltoise, the top three. And the top female driver is Clementine Lost in fourth spot. Sasha Prost came through the confusion ahead of Louis Gervaison. And then the two guests at the tail of the field. So Christophe Ferrier with a great score, dominating in practice and the final, plus the fastest lap, 37 points. Perfect day for him. Vincent Beltoise, the best of the rest, ahead of Louis Rousset. So Beltoise now hangs on in second place in the championship ahead of Rousset. That gap is growing, almost the same as it is ahead of Vincent Beltoise. Christophe Ferrier now nearly 20 points clear. He needs to have a bad weekend soon for the others to get a glimpse of light at the end of the tunnel. Podium featuring Christophe Ferrier, Vincent Beltoise, Louis Rousset. Top female driver is Clementine Lost. And they are joined on the podium by our two guest stars, Karine Galli and Stefan Plaza there on the right-hand side. It's a busy old podium. Three steps for six people. Qualifying heat results for the Elite Pro Class day one here in Isola 2000. This is round three of the 2018-2019 Trophy Andros and it's petrol versus electric again. Olivier Panis, fastest of all in the Audi with a petrol engine. Franck Lagos is electric car in second. Nat Berton's Audi in third. Let's get into the action then in Super Pole. The top eight go through with multiple champion Jean-Baptiste Dubourg. Winner of Andorra, carrying 60 kilos of success ballast. And that doesn't just affect the balance of the car, but it affects how quickly it accelerates and how quickly it slows down as well. The balance will be added right in the centre of the car as low as possible to try and make the Renault Captur handle much the same. But weight is weight, whichever way you slice it. The ball going strongly in the Renault Cap Tour up at this stage as he flies around an Isola 2000 track that he knows very well indeed. Conditions really superb for the cars. Well, Dubourg on provisional pole. Next up is Olivier Panis in the Audi. Panis, the last Frenchman to win a Formula One Grand Prix. And the last man to win a Grand Prix for the Ligier team as well. Now, of course, with his son Aurelien racing not just in touring cars, but also in the Trophy Andros. So this is a real family affair. And so far this season, Aurelien has had the upper hand in terms of pace. Didn't have so much luck last time out just before Christmas, though. And Olivier Panis showing here that the old boy has still got what it takes. It's going to be very close at the line, but he is just behind 19 hundreds of a second. Next up and sounding very different, the all-electric Andros Sport racer of Franck Lagos. 
Of course, another single-seater French racing star. Followed hot on the heels, really, of Olivier Panis's career. And again, the whole ethos of racing very different with these cars. The transmission works the same way, all four-wheel drive, four-wheel steer, the ice spikes and so on in the tyres, but the sound is very different. Eight thousandths of a second up on the Renault at the moment. Really pushing on, Frank Lagos. Oh, getting in a little hot, too hot. Half spins, clatters the barrier. And Lagos across the line, out of the final corner, will be fifth. Matt Berton in his Audi. Races Audis through the summer in the World TCR Cup. And now racing Audis through the winter as well. So staying with the four rings, very different from his TCR machine. Berton, drifting out a little wide. And again, like Lagos, really losing it in the final corner, 1200s back. In some way adrift. Oh, and in the final corner, it goes away for Berton too. Well, two big slides, Nat Berton behind Franck Lagos in sixth. Benjamin Riviere next up in the Peugeot. The key to success here might be to go at about 99% attack. Oh, he was just too close to the apex there. Had to waft off the throttle a little to allow the nose to drift past the snowbank. It's him locking the rear wheels under braking just to get the tail flicked out onto the back straight. Half a second down. Well, at the moment, this could be good enough for third or fourth. That's how he fares towards the end of the lap. That'll make the difference. Big pendulum effect right in the final corner and in the end, four tenths back. And that leaves Benjamin Riviere in fifth position. Our top qualifier, although second in Super Bowl, Olivier Panis has more points than Dubois and Lagorce, who are second and third. Both qualified reasonably strongly, though. Matt Berton, though, dropping disappointingly down towards the tail of Super Bowl. Cars on the grid for the Elite Pro final day one here in Isla 2000. Olivier Panis on pole from Jean Baptiste Dubois, Frank Lagos, and Benjamin Riviere making up row two. Nat Berton and Andrea Dubois on row three of the grid ahead of Aurelien Panis and Nico Prost. That's an all electric row. Here we go then. Olivier Panis makes a good start on the inside as well. Look at the green car, Frank Lagos up to second place. Dubois Renault gets eased out, he gets nudged again. He's down to fourth place. Up into third has gone Benjamin Riviere. And the Audi coming up the inside as well. Aurelien Panis trying to make a way through. On board with Jean Baptiste Dubois. There's the number two car of Benjamin Riviere. That's third. Frank Lagos, the lime green car in second. That's the Borg's team saying that his brother Andrea is right behind him. Not sure what his answer was there, didn't get that. It's Andrea de Borg behind Jean Baptiste. There's the battle somewhere in there. Do not adjust your sets. These, these cars with their four wheel drive, four wheel steer. And their three litre engines are throwing up a huge amount of ice. Olivier Panis leaves from Franck Lagos. Benjamin Riviere in third. Then Jean Baptiste Borg, Andrea Dubourg. Nat Berton down to sixth. And Aurelien Panis in seventh ahead of Nico Pross. So they did not get much of a start line benefit from their electric powertrains. Not in the way that Franck Lagos did. Maybe Lagos was just a little bit better in anticipating the lights. On board then with Jean-Baptiste Dubourg. You can see how tough visibility is. Still your brother behind you. Uh, sounds like he's pushing hard. The well, leader is pushing hard as well, Livio Panis. Romping away with this. Looking for the extra point for fastest lap. Franck Lagos, Benjamin Riviere. That's second and third. There's Lagos, the lime green car, the Trophy Andros livery. Riviere right with him in the Peugeot. Team Tom Dubois, he can just 
ease it off a little. His brother has dropped back. Not sure he's going to ease off particularly. Good battle here. Lagos, Riviere, electric versus petrol. Quick message from Dubois saying everything seems OK. And with the visibility, the team radio is really handy. Team just handing out the gaps to the cars behind and in front. Olivier Panis building up a big advantage now. Five seconds clear of the battle for second. Lagos at Riviere. Lagos with the lime green. Riviere with the white roof under Peugeot. And Dubourg is not too far behind. There he is, spitting flame on the overrun. If these two make contact and lose a little bit of momentum, then Dubourg could be right in there with a shot at the podium. That's the team asking Dubourg to just take care of the tyres a little bit for day two. He said there's no problem from behind, so just look after the tyres. Well, if the podium battle comes his way, I'm sure he'll take advantage, but right now, a little bit of strategy from Jean-Baptiste Dubourg. Nobody is going to catch Olivier Panis. 5.3 seconds clear with two to go. It's all about Lagos and Riviere, and I think Lagos might just be starting to creep away. And look at Dubourg, though. If that's preserving the tyres, then I'm not sure what the two in front of him are doing. I think he has points on his mind. Points on his mind, too, for Olivier Panis. Way clear. And Franck Lagos now equidistant from the third place car, Benjamin Riviere, as Riviere is from Jean Baptiste Dubourg. So Riviere right in the centre there. That's third place in the Peugeot. Dubourg is very close. Last lap. Olivier Panis, six seconds clear. And Franck Lagos now just about out of harm's reach. He's going to have to commit some cardinal sin for Riviere to get close to him. Likewise, in the battle for third and fourth. Right behind, though, good tussle on for fifth and sixth. Fifth, sixth and seventh, in fact. But no doubting who has been in control here right from the moment the lights changed. It's been all about Olivier Panis. Absolutely flying away. Huge margin of victory for Olivier Panis. He wins the first of the finals here. Second, Franck Lagos. Third, Benjamin Riviere. And not too far behind is Jean Baptiste Dubourg. Well, Olivier Panis missed the round in Andorra because of work commitments. It looks as though he is definitely making up for lost time. That is win number 13 in the Trophy Andros for the Frenchman. Olivier Panis, Franck Lagos, Benjamin Riviere are the top three. Jean Baptiste Dubois ahead of your brother Andrea, then Nat Berton. They were very close to the line. And Aurelien Panis held off Nico Prost in the electric battle. So Olivier Panis then with the top score for the day, ahead of Lagos and Dubois, who just outscored Benjamin Riviere by a couple of points, courtesy of his slightly better qualifying score. And all of that means that there is a new points leader, Jean-Baptiste Dubourg, the former multiple champion, sneaks four points ahead of Aurelien Panis, who took the points lead away to the Christmas New Year break. Franck Lagos in third ahead of Benjamin Riviere, then Nat Berton and the second of the electric car drivers, former multiple champion Nico Prost. Well, that is how they finish day one. Day two could see that all change, but for now, our winner, Olivier Panis, ahead of Franck Lagos and Benjamin Riviere. Big smiles from our top three. That is how they finish day one in Isola 2000.
day two at Isla 2000, round three of the Trophée Andros, and it's the pole man in the electric race. Christophe Ferrier, the previous day's winner, who holds the lead ahead of Vincent Beltois. Clementine lost the number one machine, top lady driver in third place. Little on his own, Sasha Prost. Penultimate lap and lapping the guest driver, Stefan Plaza, is Vincent Beltois in second place. But as they head on to the final lap, seven seconds behind Christophe Ferrier. Lost in third, Gavisson in fourth, and there is the battle for third place. Lady driver in the number one machine, Vincent Gavisson right behind her. Then the number 10 machine, Louis Rousset, he's not too far away either. But the leader is a long way clear, as he has been in each of the races so far this season. It's five out of five for Ferrier. The Elite Pro Class is the creme de la creme of the Trophy Andros. And again, for the second day in Isla 2000, it's Olivier Panis who rises to the top. Best in the qualifying heats, ahead of Andrea Dubourg and Nat Berton. The top eight go through into the Super Bowl runs. Olivier Panis now carrying 60 kilos ballast, having won the previous day. Well, he wasn't quite able to grab Super Bowl despite being fastest in qualifying on day one in Isla 2000. And it might well be the same case now with an extra 60 kilos. That's very nearly a full-size passenger alongside him. Well, he's the man who sets the pace, but wide out there in the loose snow, and that is all drag, slowing the car down. Sideways is good, but he'll keep on the clean ice and avoid the snow banks. Engine howling as Olivier Panis wrings the neck of his Audi A1 Quattro. Out of the final corner, checkered flag flies. It's a 47.815. Panis 44.228 on day one. That wasn't enough for pole. Next up, Olivier Perno, fifth fastest through the qualifying heats. Loses a bit of momentum there at the apex. Needs to be a little smoother. Any time the car comes to a halt in any direction is not good. See some sparks now coming off the spikes in the tyres. Starting to work their way down through the ice towards the tarmac underneath. Narrow tyres with hundreds of inch-long spikes in them to give the driver some sort of grip on this hard-packed surface. Nice smooth-looking style. Staying early on is going to take something to come back from. Ahead of Panis at the intermediate. And across the line, 3,800s in front. This is Andrea de Borg. Very strong in day two qualifying heats. Younger brother of the multiple champion, Jean-Baptiste de Borg. And in another of the Renault Captures. Again, just losing a little bit of momentum there in that tightening end to the long first right-hand corner. See how he's faring at the split time. Olivier Pernod was 1.2 seconds ahead of Olivier Panis and then lost a lot of ground in the second half of the lap. Only three eighths in front. 38 thousandths behind. This is very close. Tiniest of errors or the tiniest of cleanups compared to Panis will put him in front and at the line. In the green by very nearly a second. That was a great end to the lap. Matt Berton next up in the second of the Audi A1 Quattros. Next single seater star has turned recently to sports cars, GTs, and touring cars. Again, that lock up just drifting past the apex. He seems to be keeping the momentum up though. So to go ahead of his Audi teammate. All's fair in love and Super Pole. If he can take an advantage, he absolutely will do. For the first win of the season, Nathaniel Berton. A tenth up. It's a good run so far from the Audi. And let's see if he can keep the balance, keep the momentum up. Just fringing the snowbank in the final corner. Across the line he comes though. 3,900s back. How did he lose that time? He goes third. Jean-Baptiste Dubourg, the reigning champion in the second of the Renault Capture. And he's got the number one on the door panels as befits the champion. 
when we get to the season finale in Stade de France in five weeks' time. We will have a whole host of former champions as well as the current competitors, including the return of 10-time Trophy Andros champion Ivar Muller, which will be worth looking forward to. Muller spends ooh, half a second down. That's not great from Jean-Baptiste. Muller spends a lot of his winter on ice-driving courses up in the frozen Arctic Circle. So he's still got plenty of ice time under his belt. And across the line, Jean-Baptiste Dubourg, seven tenths back, but still in third place. Andrea Dubourg then scoring highest in Super Bowl, and that just nudges him a couple of points ahead of Olivier Panis, who only got two points in the Super Bowl run. That Berton just one point behind Panis. Second day's final for the elite class, Dorian Boccalacci again on pole in the BMW. New front row man though, Sylvain Poussier in his Peugeot. On row two, Louis Gervasson and Margot Lafitte, who started second on the previous day's grid. On row three, Stefan Van Tyre and Lionel Daziano. And on row four, Emmanuel Moinel and Joel Lopez. Away we go, Dorian Boccalacci in the BMW makes a good start right behind him, Sylvain Poussier in the Peugeot, then the first of the Audis from third place on the grid, Louis Gervasson with the green highlights, Margot Lafitte with the white roof, bumping and boring behind three wide, down the inside, Joel Lopez looks like he's elbowing his way through a number six BMW, he does indeed. So his M2 from eighth on the grid shoves his way through into fifth position. All's fair in love, war and first corner action, you have to say. Dorian Boccalacci again, like everybody, has been throwing up huge clouds of ice crystals behind himself. And that's making life very hard for his pursuers. He's already pulling away from Sylvain Poussier's Peugeot. Margot Lafitte in fourth place, trying to chase Louis Gervasson in the Audi, but she's dropped away very fast on this opening lap. Gervasson 2.3 behind, Lafitte another second and change behind him. Then Lopez, Voltaire, Daziano. Margot Lafitte in fourth place, closing a little bit on Louis Gervasson. The Audi looks like he spun Gervasson there at the left-hand hairpin. Now, how is that going to work its way out? We've got great on-board pictures with Dorian Boccalacci. Shows just how good a view he's got compared to the sea of ice crystals he's throwing up for everybody else. Now he needs to focus on really keeping the show on the road here. It's going to be hard for anyone to pass him. He's just going to make sure he makes no mistakes. Two laps down. Dorian Boccalacci leading from Sylvain Poussier. Where's the battle for third place? Who comes across the line? It's Lafitte ahead of Gervasson. So Gervasson on the first of the left-handers that the lead is now coming to. Half spun the car. Margot Lafitte got by, and look, there's Gervasson with the green highlights on the Audi. That's the battle for third. So Louis Gervasson recovering his composure. Margot Lafitte, though, in third place. The daughter of 70s and 80s Grand Prix Jacques Lafitte. And there is our race leader, Dorian Boccalacci, from Sylvain Poussier. Here comes the battle for third. It's still the master of Margot Lafitte in front, the number four car, and the number three car. So Louis Gervasson in the Audi all over the back of the Mazda. Unable to find a way by. Well, Louis Gervasson giving it away there, and Dorian Boccalacci's got to make sure he doesn't do the same. A double race winning weekend would really help him. The BMW's been getting stronger all season. Sylvain Poussier right with him. Here's the battle for third. Lafitte on the inside, and that is Daziano around the outside in the Audi. So where's Gervasson? Right at the tail. Oh, contact Lopez in the number six BMW, hits Lafitte, slows her right down. So Daziano has escaped in third, then Lafitte in fourth, Joe Lopez in the BMW in fifth. Lots of excitable radio traffic. Oh, it's all action behind as well. Juanel and Van Taya, but that means that Lionel Daziano is up to third place now. And then Lafitte. Joa Lopez and with the green highlights, Gervasson. So Dorian Boccalacci leads from Sylvain Poussier. The 1 2 remains as it was, but look at the big gap back to Daziano in third, Lafitte in fourth, Joa Lopez in fifth, 
And there is the BMW with Gervasor in the green highlighted Audi right with him. Contact Stefan Bonsard, the number five car. And car number 10, that's Stefan von Tyre, the Peugeot. Contact between them at the tail of the field. And they continue racing on. Much less car damage in today's final than there was in the first days, but they have to keep them alive for the elite pro drivers. Final lap for Dorian Boccalacci. Looking very much in a class of his own. Sylvain Poussier now nearly three seconds behind. Boccalacci's really got the flow of this track superbly. BMW gets its power down nicely and he has been error-free. Particularly helped by having a good visibility in front of him. I think he's catching Stefan van Tyre. Flags are waving, but I'm not sure he needs to worry too much. Van Tyre not going to hold him up in front of Sylvain Poussier. Through goes the leader. And Stefan von Tyre doing a good job to stay out of the way. Dorian Boccalacci claims victory. Flying through the back markers, Sylvain Poussier in second spot. And the local man who was born nearby in Cannes. Dorian Boccalacci claims his second win of the weekend. Sylvain Poussier second and in the end, it was Lionel Daziano who finished up on the podium ahead of Margot Lafitte, Joel Lopez and Louis Gervasson. That was all arms and elbows in the battle for third place. Gervasson giving away more places and points than he needed to. As a result, outscored by 11 by Boccalacci, who topped the points after qualifying the final and taking the fastest lap. Sylvain Poussier, Margot Lafitte, second and third. Dorian Boccalacci is our new points leader by 11 from Louis Gervasson. That second final cost him dear. It would have been a lot tighter. What a great weekend for Dorian Boccalacci. Two wins, a huge hatful of points and the series lead. Tops the day two podium ahead of Sylvain Poussier and Margot Lafitte, who's had her best weekend of the season so far. Two-wheeled action, Trophy Andros round three, Isla 2000 for the motorcycles. This is the super final and the whole shot for Vivian Dabert. Third and fourth in the season opener in Andorra, behind his brother. Loses the lead at the first corner though, and in front is Germain Vincenot. Vivian de in second place, four-time champion, the reigning champion, Maxime Emery, the number 11 machine in third early on. Closing stages and Dabert versus Emery. Emery goes inside, outside, inside. Cuts back underneath Dabert. Contact between the two of them. Very close indeed. Emery with the inside line tighter. Gets his nose in front. A little bit of a block pass as he moves up into second place. Multiple champion now trying to make his escape. Behind the red headlight, 76 is Vivian Dabert. And then the yellow headlight, that's the number 37, brother Sylvain. And behind him is Vivian Gonnet, the number four machine, who won both races in the season opener in Andorra. They didn't race in Val Brothers, as ever, ultra competitive. Vivian de Baer, 76. And now ahead of Sylvain on the 37 machine and chasing Emery. Couple of laps in which to try and get it done. Sylvain Debert with a yellow headlight. Maxime Emery in second place, the leader way over eight seconds out front. And the longer this battle rages, the bigger the lead will become. Lap nine of ten. Pressure from Sylvain Debert on the number 37 machine. Really trying to fight his way through. Last lap. Leader working his way through traffic there, the red helmet, red machine number 14, Vansano wriggles through safely. Here he comes then with the red helmet. Back markers behind him, that's suitable protection for him on the final lap. 8.9 seconds in front though, doesn't seem that he needs it. There is the leader, still more traffic in front. No point in over trying now, just a couple of corners remain. Checker flag is waiting. 
Jermaine Fanceneau will take his second straight win. There he is at the flag, quick dab. Second place will be Maxime Emery. And a huge moment for Sylvain Dabert. Finishes in third, Vivian, his brother, in fourth, and Vivian Gonet in fifth. Well, there is your happy winner. And the podium, Vansano on the top step, Emery and Daber complete the top three. And funny enough, <laughs> Jermaine Vansano does look like it was hard work. Well, he scores top points ahead of Maxime Emery and Sylvain Daber. He won the final and then the super final as well. And that means that he has got a very handy points tally from the weekend. Two wins and the perfect score of 60. 10 ahead of Maxime Emery, Vivian Debert and Vivian Gonet in third and fourth spots. Gonet struggling a little bit earlier on in the day though, didn't do too well in the final. And as a result, although he still has the points lead, the gap has narrowed to just two over Germain Vincenot, who's got a better all-round average. They've got a pair of wins apiece. Maxime Emery just nine points back, and the Dabair brothers not out of contention either. Elite Pro Super Final grid, and it is Andrea Dubourg on pole position ahead of Olivier Panis, the race one winner. Matt Berton in the second Audi, and Olivia Pernot in his Mazda on row two. Then the reigning champion Jean Baptiste Dubourg in his Renault, and Aurelien Panis, the first the electric cars, ahead of Nico Prost, Benjamin Riviere, and the rest. So, will the electric car of Aurelien Panis get a good start this time? Here we go. No, the yellow car does not get away any quicker than the others. It is the pole man, Andrea Dubourg who has the lead. Olivier Panis in second, Nat Berton in third with the green highlights. Aurelien Panis, the yellow car on the outside. Fifth position, trying to take fourth for Jean Baptiste Dubourg, but he gets sideswiped into the wall on the inside. Dubourg using the racing line between the two corners and gives Panis nowhere to go. Andre Dubourg then leading from Olivier Panis. Nat Berton, Olivier Perno, then Jean-Baptiste Dubourg and Aurelien Panis. So it is Dubourg, Panis, Dubourg, Panis with a couple of cars in between them, Berton and Perno. At the end of lap one, it's Andre Dubourg from Olivier Panis, Nat Berton, and then Perno in fourth place, not too far behind. There he is with the white and blue. And then Dubourg. Jean-Baptiste Dubourg, the number one car, Aurelien Panis and Benjamin Riviere right with him, with Aurelien Panis then. So this is the man in sixth position. Jean-Baptiste Dubourg just in front of him, the number one machine. Driving style is identical, still very sideways, four-wheel drive, four-wheel steer, same tyres and same studs. But of course, very different noise or lack thereof in the car of Aurelien Panis being fully electric. Electric motors driving the front and rear axles. So they don't have a petrol engine or a fuel tank, but the big battery pack underneath compensates for the lack of other grubby bits. Andrea Dubourg out front, still from Olivier Panis, the grey Audi with the red highlights, then that Berton, his teammate, the grey Audi with the green highlights. Fourth place is still Olivier Perno in the Mazda 3, throwing it around, looking for third place if he can get it. And that Berton is going to take some unlocking from that, I think. There's the number four car, a little drift there, got in very hot. Out front, Andrea Dubourg still with the lead, and still with Olivier Panis right with him. Santelok Racing Team watching as the Audis run 2-3. And that Berton in third place. Allez, Olivier Martin, dixième pour le record du tour. Words of encouragement from Olivier Panis from the team boss. Two thirds distance, and the order remains the same. Aurelien Panis, the yellow car, still really under pressure for sixth place, but hanging on. On board with Aurelien Panis. Fifth in front, fourth just visible, and third. This is a very close race indeed. Visibility not as bad as it was on day one. 
Still not great. That's why there are wipers on every available surface. Windscreen and side windows. And Olivier Panis there in the ice storm behind the race leader, Andre de Borg, is doing everything he can. Keeping the leader very honest. It's the smallest margin, first to second, we've seen all weekend in any of the categories. Panis again getting in a little hot, but looking for the traction off the corner. Andrea Duborg closes the door, gets the car to stop and then turn. And Panis can't get through in that little S's. But Olivio Panis using all of his expertise, all of his tricks, some of them from ice, most of them from tarmac. And he is really pushing hard. Penultimate lap and still Andrea Duborg hangs on. And Panis could easily just overrun a corner and nudge the leader out of the way. I'm not sure that's the way he wants to do it, though. Fantastic stuff. Everybody is glued to the action. Olivier Panis right with Andre Duborg. A little touch between the two of them, not enough to unsettle the leader. Last lap. Andre Duborg has got to hold on here. He's resisted the pressure from Olivier Panis all the way through. And it looks as though he's just about got enough. Renault is as nimble as the Audi in the tight stuff and as quick in the quick stuff. Panis with one chance, a lunge in the final corner. But that's not going to happen, I don't think. He's not quite close enough. Andre Duborg has enough in hand. It's going to be very close, but it's victory for Andre Duborg. Olivier Panis in second place, Nat Berton in third, Olivier Pernot across the line in fourth place, head of Jean-Baptiste Duborg, Aurelien Panis in sixth. Well, first win of the season for Andrea Duborg in the Renault, Olivier Panis in second place, Nat Berton in third, then Olivier Pernot in the Mazda, the second Renault of Jean-Baptiste Duborg, ahead of Aurelien Panis, the first of the electric cars. And the points for day two. Duborg with the most from the qualifying and also 16 for winning in the final. Fastest lap, in fact, went to Nico Prost, who finished last in the final. So that adds to his points tally. But Andrea Duborg coming out with the big point score from day two. Brother Jean-Baptiste is still our points leader by five from Aurelien Panis, but the gap opening up behind Franck Logos in third place, now 29 behind, leading a very tight chasing pack. It could all change in a week from now as we go racing again in Serre Chevalier. For the meanwhile, though, here is our day two podium, Andre de Bourg, Olivier Panis and Nat Berton. We'll see you with all the action next time out in the Trophée Andros. More to come after the break as we return to the United States and to Costa Mesa in California for round two action of the 2018 AMA Enduro Cross Series.